Total internal reflection. Total internal reflection is an optical phenomenon that occurs when a ray of light strikes a medium boundary at an angle larger than a particular critical angle with respect to the normal to the surface. If the reflect refractive index is lower on the other side of the boundary, no light can pass through and all of the light is reflected. The critical angle is the angle of incidence above which total internal reflection occurs, like for example shown here, or here. As the angle of incidence increases, at a point the angle of reflection equals 90 degrees, at which rays parallel rays reflect. This is the critical angle, theta c. There is no refracted ray we talk about total internal reflection. So basically when you start from this source and it, this source is able to give different angles, as the angle keeps changing at a particular critical level, all, there is no refra refraction anymore. All of the ray will be reflected back. One of the things that's really important to understand that this total internal reflection when it happens through um, a medium, let's say glass, it can be reflected, reflected again and again and again. So what is that critical angle at which ref this in total internal reflection happens? Well, it depends on the medium. So from Snell's law, we know n1 sine of theta 1 equals n2 sine of theta 2. So for glass, with n1 equals 0.1, 1.0 and n2 equals 1.5, theta c is about 41.8 degrees. Now let's do an example. The figure below shows a triangular prism of grass, a ray incident normal to one surface being totally reflected. If theta is 35 degrees, what can you conclude about the index of refraction of the glass? So the picture shows a prism like that and it shows the angle it's coming in and the angle that it's going out so I equals R okay what it says is theta 1 which it shows here is 45 degrees that's what it gives us right and it says what can you conclude about the index of refraction of the glass okay we know the theta 1, which is 45 degrees, must be equal or greater than the critical angle, which is given by, I'm just going to call it theta c for now. Okay, why do I know that? I know that because this ray is being totally internally reflected. If this was not true, then part of it will be refracted out as it comes here. Okay, but I see that it is totally internally reflected. So what do I know? N1 sine of theta 1 equals N2 sine of theta 2 which in this case is going to be 90 degrees, right? Because it is being totally internally reflected. That means sine of 90 equals 1. What do I get? N1 sine of theta 1 equals N2. So this implies theta 1 equals sine inverse of N2 minus N1. It's just a matter of rearranging this above equation, OK? Now, what, do, what else do I know? This means that my critical angle, theta c, is equal to n2 over n1, sine inverse of n2 over n1. Now, this implies if n2 is air, or, or I know that n2 is air, then n2 equals 1. So I get theta c equals sine inverse of 1 over n glass, okay? Or I can say n glass equals sine of theta c, okay? That's another way to look at it. That means that theta c must be less than 45 degrees. So theta c 
must be less than 45 degrees. Why? Because if it is greater than th 45 degrees, then that means that part of this ray will be internally refracted. It's not, not totally internally refracted, but refracted outwards. So here's what I know. If that is true, then that means NG must be greater than 1 over sine of 45 degrees. Okay? And 1 over sine of 45 degrees... Oh, oops, I made a mess. This should be 1 over NG. Sorry, that should be 1 over NG. Okay? That means NG must be greater than 1.41. If that was not true, then part of this ray will be refracted out into the air. This is the air, and this is the glass. Part of this air will, will come out. And since that is not happening, I can guarantee that this holds true. Now, in the next example, what it's asking is, what happens if this prism is now immersed in water with n equals 1.33? What happens in that case? So, so that picture kind of looks like this. I'm going to put it in water and see what comes out. So I have it in water now. So imagine this is my water. I should have planned better. Should have done this with green and then put the water in. So now what will happen? Well, a lot of things will remain the same except I'm going to now have N1 equals N1 equals 1.50 and N2 will equals 1.33. Okay, so the new critical angle after doing all of these calculations just like this one, my new critical angle will become equals to 62.46 degrees. Okay, how do I get that? I calculate it for this one, right? Whereas, in this case, it's not air anymore, but it is actually going to be... Okay, let me just do that here. So, my theta C will now equal sine inverse of N2 over N1, which will equal sine inverse of 1.33 divided by 1.50, and that comes out to 63.46 degrees. Okay? Hmm. But what, what, what did we know? We needed the angle of incidence to be less than 45 degrees as we calculated over here. So the angle of incidence has to be less than 45 degrees for total internal reflection to happen. This isn't. Then what will happen is that part of this ray will actually be reflected outward. Okay, so it will have a theta 1, and this will be theta 2. This is no longer air, but this is now water. Okay? Now, advantage of total internal reflection. Well, there are a lot of advantage of total internal reflections. For example, the most common one that we know of are in fiber optics. For example, endoscopes use fiber, uh, uh, use total internal um, reflection. Arthroscopes use them. Total inter internal reflection is also used in prisms, periscopes, and binoculars.